Okay, boys and girls, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and pretty interesting. And I wanted to talk about my top three truck knives. Now, what I mean by a truck knife, we're actually going to have a defensive and a survival truck knife option. But essentially knives that, whether it is survival or defense in their appropriate categories, make really great knives to be based out of a truck. Maybe they're a little bit too big or a little bit bulky to carry on person. So I think most people would carry most of these knives. But either way, they're really effective, really durable uh, knives to be based out of a truck. They also work really well paired together with a survival survival kit, so something like a PSK or a larger extended survival kit. And essentially, one of these knives is truly what my uh, go-to truck survival knife, and essentially how it's paired is I do have a saw, an axe, and of course the aforementioned survival knife in the truck to kind of form that tool kit or gear setup to be paired with a survival kit that has things like a PLB, you know, things such as lighters, matches, um, stuff like that so that you can start fires. But this is the essential baseline for survival tools. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the, the top three survival knives. So the first one for me is probably going to be the SE6 and the SE6 for a few reasons. One, it's the cheapest on the list and it's probably one of the most versatile options. It's very comfortable. I really do dig this knife in many different ways, but it is a cool uh, survival knife, cool outdoor knife in general, but it is a very versatile, very very well capable blade for many different bushcrafting and especially survival tasks. In addition, though this one is not currently set up to my PSK, I have had this one set up uh, with my PSK attached, and you can also do that. So it makes a really great option if you want to run a smaller kind of uh, piggybacked survival kit to complement complement the overall effectiveness of the actual survival knife. So that is my first choice, and that is the SE6. Okay, so stepping it up in price and in kind of tankiness, if you will, uh, is going to be the Falcon even A1. Now the A1 does get some criticism for being quite thick, I will give it that, and it also does get criticism for being quite expensive. And at nearly $200, it is definitely not the cheapest option. Well, it's definitely the midline for these knives, but it is certainly not the cheapest option. And if you are looking for something a little bit more affordable, I would recommend taking a look at uh, Cold Steel's SRK in Sanmai or CPM 3V if you can find it. Um, those are also, also very venerable options that do a lot of what this knife does. Now the reason why I picked the A1 specifically for this is for the fact that it is a very cold weather resistant blade. Of course it has a full thermorun handle on it so it is very temperature neutral so even if this blade is freezing cold the handle is still neutral. It's not going to be too cold or too hot so this is a great knife to run in the winter especially if you just throw it in your truck and you can forget about it if you do ever need it. It's going to be, like I said, reasonably warm to use without gloves or with gloves. I think a lot of people forget, you know, if you're holding a cold knife or a cold knife handle, even with gloves, the cold knife handle is going to leach heat out of your um, hands, especially if they're not super insulated by some like big mittens. So that is the advantage to the uh, the A1. In addition, the thickness, while usually not a great thing, I don't like super thick, super beefy blades, um, certainly in a survival situation, and if you're trying to, you know, do things that you wouldn't normally do with a knife, such as batoning, having a really thick, really beefy blade does give you some confidence and some leeway to put some additional stress and additional uh, kind of wear and tear on that blade without fear of it breaking, snapping, bending, and stuff like that. So the A1 is probably my favorite for all around, all season, because it is going to be reasonably temperature resistant and just reasonably weather resistant. Not to mention, too, being the fact that it has the Thermarun handle, it's also going to be pretty tacky and grippy regardless to whether it's wet or dry, cold or warm. So that is the A1 by Falkneven. Um, once again, it's not necessarily the best knife for every circumstance or situation, but I think for a truck-based survival knife, the A1, just the standard A1 with the original thermo run handles, is a really good all-season survival blade. 
Okay, so now getting over to my personal pick, and this is the one that usually does stay in the truck, unless there's other reasons to pull it out, and that is the CRK Pacific. Now, once again, I do really like the A1 and how much warmer the handle is. This one's actually quite cold right now, but the reason why the Pacific is my go-to is simply because I've done a lot of survival and bushcrafting training with this blade, so it's one of those knives that I feel extremely confident with. I have modified this knife to fit my needs and once again trained with it a lot so the primary reason why i stick with the crk pacific is because it feels like a glove to me i know how to use it very effectively uh, in survival situations and once again i've also put it through its paces for years as you guys can probably tell this blade does not look super new super you know clean or stock you know it definitely has some modification marks and just some overall use marks and luckily the cerakote actually does a pretty good job at hiding them but certainly this blade does get used and heavily abused so the crk pacific is my personal choice and it is a really solid blade now granted it is expensive and hard to find but it does the job absolutely fantastic and because we are talking about truck based survival knives i have to talk about the one that is actually my truck based survival knife uh, full time while the other two certainly are solid and i would have no uh, hesitation or trepidation with running either of those two as my truck based survival knives this is truly the one that is and of course i have this one rigged up with a surge and a ferro rod is what this little orange handled thing is essentially it's just a, a ferro rod wrapped in a bunch of uh, orange duct tape for high vis but this is the leatherman surge in there to complement the knife so this has a lot of capability for many different tasks that i need for sure. So those are the three primary survival knives. Now let's talk about some defensive options. Now usually when we talk about defensive truck defensive things I usually talk about handguns or rifles and you know firearms as a whole and I will say that I think firearms are your best bet when it comes to defense of a vehicle but there are a lot of circumstances and situations when having firearms in your vehicle is either illegal due to where you live or illegal due to where you go. I know that there are a lot of people that live or function on military installments and of course going on to a military base with a firearm that is not um, registered or acknowledged is of course illegal so having a firearm buried away isn't always the best option especially because a lot of these bases at least up here in Alaska do regularly check vehicles for um, contraband I guess you would say so do be bear that in mind so there is some practicality to maybe why you would want a defensive knife and the first one for me is going to be the tops ice dagger now I've actually been featuring this a lot on YouTube shorts I get tons of questions about what this guy is this is the tops ice dagger and I love this thing because it's small reasonably compact of course it is a dagger and it is super super tough being made out of 1095 it is basically impossible to break this thing um, as you guys can see here um, it has a lot of wear marks from me just stabbing random things and trying to break it in the beginning of my ownership but the way that this kind of arrowhead shape is made or ground into the blade it is it has a super robust tip and pretty good edges on the side so once again made out of 1095 very tough very robust and is a really solid option for a driver-based defensive option this thing even just in my Tacoma there are at least a half dozen places I could easily slip this and keep it you know kind of concealed but at the same time if I ever needed to deploy it and use it for defensive purposes readily accessible so once again i do recommend firearms over knives but if you can't have a firearm a defensive knife is probably the next best choice so next to that and once again depending on your state the state the state of alaska is a otf auto friendly state so my next one is going to be the mtut or my <laughs> Microtech Ultratech and this is of course a double-edged or dagger and one side is fully serrated the other side is plain and this guy is just overall a absolute beast and of course very snappy as you can see and uh, yeah I really don't have enough good to say about this or good things to say about this but really essentially a lot like the um, 
Tops Ice Dagger. It is also a dagger. It's just an OTF or out the front, so it's a little bit easier to hide or put away, and it doesn't immediately look as threatening. Granted, if anyone knows knives, they will probably know what this is, but from the outset, and if you just have a normal, you know, standard person looking at this, they probably won't immediately know what this is. So it's a little bit more discreet than having a dagger that has a Kydex, uh, you know, imprint of the blade itself. So it's a little bit more discreet in that way and a little bit more concealable. So the next one and the last one for me is going to be yet again another auto and I like autos in vehicles primarily because this is a very confined space. If someone was uh, very close to me and I just needed to get something out, I like having an auto that is strong and snappy so and also one hand deployment without any kind of fancy things. You know Emerson wave flippers and such are really cool but once again that requires you kind of being in a standing position being able to properly deploy the knife. With autos the reason why I primarily lean towards them is I can sit here deploy it with one hand very easily and it just comes out so if I need to defend myself I can very easily get this knife up and ready to go. So that's why I am leaning towards OTFs and autos in this video. If you do live in a restricted state, um, bear that in mind. Maybe try to find something that's a little bit uh, better or works around the laws that you do have. One that I would recommend and that I do recommend to a lot of people is also the Spyderco either civilian or matriarch depending on what kind of size knife. I would say for a vehicle based uh, sir, er, for a vehicle based defensive knife I would probably say the civilian but the matriarch is essentially the same knife just a little bit smaller and a little bit more compact once again the uh, matriarch is easier to carry but if you are thinking about a vehicle based knife then the civilian is going to be a little bit better you get better reach you get a better blade and once again the civilian or the matriarch are very very uh, dangerous very effective knives so if you guys want to know more about them i do have a video on the matriarch too but uh, overall i would highly recommend that one i don't have a matriarch on me currently but uh, the matriarch is a very great knife for defensive purposes so if you know, you can't have an auto like these guys, then I would recommend looking at something like the civilian or the matriarch. Um, so that is defensive knives and survival knives. I wanted to give you guys some options and kind of explain why you might end up needing, you know, a defensive knife as opposed to a defensive firearm. And in addition, why you might want a survival knife in your truck. I think that one is pretty much a no-brainer regardless to whether you have a truck gun or not. Um, for sure, having a survival knife is very important. And even having a self-defense knife in your truck is not a bad idea. Or I should say, vehicle. <laughs> so anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.